Hello, this is part 3 where we will create this animation. If you came here directly, you might want to check out the previous parts on my channel. Let's go! This is Splendor 2.8, still in beta at the moment. First, I delete everything, add a new mesh circle and set the vertices to 6. I'm just going to call this pin. In edit mode, I'm going to extrude on the C axis, maybe a little further. Then on top here, this loop, I'm going to add a face and then bevel this a little, like so. And this is going to be our hexagonal pin. Okay, go to edit mode again, select everything, scale it down to like 0.3. And place it right at the origin point here. Okay, so this is one pin. Now we go to animation nodes, create a new node tree. Now we're going to replicate this pin many, many times. I'm going to use an object matrix output node for that. So I need an object instancer. Use my pin to instance this object. I'm going to instance it 800 times. That's going to be my object. And where do I want to put them? I can put in a, uh, matrices here. So just like in the last video, I'm going to take a distribute matrices. I want a grid set to size and have 40 divisions on X, 20 on Y. And now I will have to adjust the width and the length here. Okay, so the width I'm going to increase so that the pins are sitting next to each other on the X axis. And the length, if I look at it from the top, I can adjust the length so that we can place uh, the other set of pins in here. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate this node and these two nodes actually as well. And here I will have to offset this, these matrices a little bit. So matrix offset, plug that in here, offset the location and move them up and over just to fill in and get this sort of honeycomb pattern going on here. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, this is our um, array of pins. And now we're going to move them up and down in a loop. But in order to do that, we first have to combine these two lists of objects into one. So a list combine object this one and this one. Now we have one list with all of the pins and we can plug that into our loop and now we're going to create the loop. So subprogram create new loop. We have a new iterator as an input which is an object list and we can add a subprogram invoke and plug in our object list here. I'm just going to call this move pins. That's, that's what the loop does. So first, uh, I'm going to get the location of each pin. So an object transform input. 
And here's the location, which is a vector of the pin. I am going to separate this vector so I can use the X and the Y to determine the C. Right, so because we want to move them up and down and we want to use uh, math functions to do that. Right at the end, we have to combine our vector again. The X and the Y stays the same. And only the C is going to be moved up and down using some math down here. And we can add an object, transform output, plug in, oops, set the location with this vector for this object. And just in case we want to do anything else with these uh, objects after our loop, we might as well add a new generator output, object list, and oops, and have them come out of our sub program here in case we want to do anything. Okay, now down here, what can we do to move these pins up and down? Well, we're going to use number, math, and the sign function. Right, so this is going to be a sine wave like this. And we will have one going uh, on the X and another one going on the Y to get this sort of wave going through our pins. So we use the X for this one and we use the Y for this one. Sine. We will add these two together with another number math add. This one and this one and that's going to be our C value and right away we can see we have the pins moving up and down. Now to give some variation we are going to change the amplitude uh, and of course we do that again with a math node set to multiply by something like maybe 0.3 and Put it in here and multiply it by 0.2. Okay, so now we have this, but it's still very uniform because um, this frequency and this frequency is still the same. So, how can we change that? We add another math multiply before our sine function, and now we can increase or decrease the frequency for the sign going in the, the y direction. Now let me move all of this over a little because we have to add our animation. And we're gonna do that with more math nodes and the animation time info. So we plug this in here First, we're going to add the frame number to the Y. We're also going to add the frame number to the X and use this as an input for our sign. Now, if I pull up a timeline and change the time, we can see we get the wave going in the X and the wave going in the Y, but if I hit play, this is quite fast. So we'll take down the speed by simply adding another math note here. Oops, number math, multiply this by, I don't know, 0.1 and duplicate it and multiply it for the Y by 0 0.05. Now what does this look like? Uh, this is very slow. So we could play with the speed. Uh, we can also play with the amplitude here. Uh, 
I'm just playing around with the values here to create something that looks interesting. Now let me add a camera. Position it. Let's go to camera view in this window. And we can also find an angle that looks interesting. Maybe a bit of a steeper angle like this. A little bit closer so that we don't see the edges. And here we have the animation. And we have that one pin in the middle there, which is our or original pin that we can hide. And now we only have the pins generated with this animation node tree. I'm just going to quickly add some lights to this scene. Switch this to rendered view. Make the world completely black. This lamp is going to be orange. This one is going to be teal. And then maybe add another one over here on the side or on the front. That's white. Turn on the energy just so we get a little bit of an effect on the, the bevels that we created. Okay, so this is what we have, and this is the animation that we get. I'm playing with these numbers here, we can change the amplitude, we can change the offset, we can change the speed of the waves. If I multiply this by a negative value, we have it going in a different direction. I'm just going to go in and edit this pin real quick. And give it more of a bevel to make it more obvious. Okay. So now this might look more interesting here. Okay, so that's it. And of course, over here, instead of plugging the pin into these two um, object instancers, I'm just going to use an object input. Plug that in here and in here. Because now I can easily swap out the pin with a different object. For example, I create a icosphere, go to edit mode, scale it down quite a bit, give it a new material, emission shader, strength 5, make it blue. Switch on the bloom effect because no EV tutorial is complete without a bloom effect. Now I plug that in here. Oops. Hide the, the original icosphere. And we get this sort of animation. Very easy. Position my camera differently, make it sort of immersed into these glowy dots. Go back to my icosphere, go to edit mode, scale them down even more. And we have this cool wave. 
And this is our node tree. Just to recap, all we basically did was we take an object, we duplicate it, instance it, and place it with these uh, distribute matrix nodes. So we get, create this grid pattern. We place them in this hexagonal pattern. That's why we have two of them. Uh, combine those lists together. So we have one list of objects that we can move up and down using our subprogram, our loop. And the loop takes each of the objects, keeps the X and the Y location, and changes the C location based on the X and Y location using the frame and some math notes down here. Basically, the most important thing here that actually moves things is the sign function. And we use that as the C and I'll put this into our object list. That's it. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. It only takes half a second and it's free. I'm looking forward to your comments below and don't forget to share this video with other Blender heads. Thanks. See you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.